Tulsi, I wanted to go. I saw your post on this, and actually, I kind of like that iPhone is doing this now. When you download new apps and and with the Threads app, it you don't have to go through like obviously they always want you to look at the terms of service and and again it's usually like the small print legal forms. But I iPhone at least on the Apple app when you download from the store, uh, they're making it very clear the data that is going to be collected on you. It's it is shocking when it is taken out of legalese, Tulsi, and put into just basic bullet points, what you are giving, to, in this case, to uh, a Mark Zuckerberg and meta. Threads and Meta, when you da- just by downloading Threads, not even by utilizing it yet, but just by downloading it. Yeah, it, it's pretty disturbing. You know, when, when sometimes when I talk to people about this, this broader issue of how these big tech and social media companies are collecting so much information. People are like, oh, I got nothing to hide. That's not what it's about. When you actually, like you said, when you look at, uh, in simple terms, the information they're collecting, things like, you know, uh, your contact info, your browsing history, your usage data, your contact, uh, specific identifiers about you. And then they have this nebulous thing called sensitive info. What is that exactly? And, and just these questions should, should raise alarm bells in people's minds, not only that they're collecting all this information on us. I mean, our, most of us have our phones with us uh, almost everywhere we go. And, and there's a lot of information, personal information they could collect there. But it's what, what are they doing with it? They're monetizing this for their own profit, certainly. But then, then you take a step back and you look at the, the increased um, – revealing of collusion that we're seeing between the national security state, federal law enforcement agencies, department of justice, and these big tech companies and how either they are willingly providing information to the government about those that the government's interested in for whatever reason. Uh, But then there's also the case of, of implied pressure where if you've got the FBI calling and saying, Hey, we need this information about this group or this individual um, whether the threat is implied or or not, uh, if it's explicit or implicit, the the big tech companies are in a position where they have to think, well, if we don't provide this information, what consequences will we face? What extra scrutiny will we be under? What what power will they then use against us in order to get us to submit? So there's a whole range of consequences here. Uh, that we should be concerned about with this extensive data capture that's coming from companies like Meta and people like Mark Zuckerberg, who don't have any qualms about doing it. No, I mean, I just want to read through real quick. This is the data linked to you. The following data may be collected and linked to your identity if you download when you download threads. Uh, and this, again, it's not that uncommon, by the way, that it's that this info is shared, uh, yeah. that, that apps take this info. Yeah, what was different here is Apple is now putting it forward very clearly, so I don't have to read for you, you know, A-1, B-2, E in small small print. So, for instance, health and fitness, your financial info, your contact info, your user content, and on that it has the picture image, so all of your photos, your browsing history, how much you use the phone, the usage data, your diagnostics, your purchases, what you've bought on your phone. Uh, again, everything you bought on your phone, your location, uh, which again is a normal one that I think people are pretty used to uh, using maps and things like that, all of your contacts, all of your searching search history, and they define that differently than browsing history, which is interesting, any uh, identifiers, like personal identifiers. Then we get to the one that uh, Tulsi said, which is the strangest, and Logan, it is strange, sensitive info, yeah. and it has an eyeball. Yeah, exactly. Without giving out real details of what that means. Sure, I think everyone has it. maybe most people at least have a basic understanding that if you're using one of these free platforms, uh, free social media platforms, they're not giving it to you for free for no reason. They're doing it for sure. data collection and advertising. And it's something we've always had a conversation about, especially when it comes to, okay, is this just being used so they can target an ad to me? Okay, I, that's sort of the business we understand. We're, we're getting this free service so they can do this. Uh, but it's also one of the reasons we said, now, TikTok, on the other hand, we said, oh, we're all pushing back against TikTok because of very specific reasons. And that was, what is the data being used for? And now when you see a look at this, it does, and, and Tulsi, I'll throw this back to you, question, it does 
bring up a lot of concerns. But there's also concern of this is the method of getting your message out right now. So it's not as easy as just saying, well, don't use the app, don't use threads, don't use Twitter, don't use Instagram or Facebook. Um, because right now, especially heading into elections over the next year, if we're not part of that conversation, uh, easily there's a huge group of people who are in that conversation. So how do we balance this? Or is this about getting more control over the data that's being spread? Logan, it's exactly that. It's about getting over. It's, it's empowering people to be able to make their own decisions about what information is being collected. Uh, and, and therefore, every one of us can say, yeah, OK, fine, I'm, I, I'm OK with this because now I want to use this app. Um, this kind of transparency it, it must must be there. And and there's some legislation in Congress that people are looking at that that uh, I, I believe there's a data privacy protection act that both Republicans and Democrats were looking at that that really should apply to all of these all of these social media companies, um, because the, the reality is that this is our virtual town square, uh, whether it's Twitter, or Facebook or Instagram or any of these others, this is our virtual town square. And for candidates who are running for office or frankly, individuals who care about an issue, nonprofits, organizations who are trying to help make sure that voters are informed before we make our our decisions at, at the polling place on Election Day. We, we want to we this is this is one of the main platforms that we have to be able uh, to reach people, especially at a time where more and more people are not trusting the, the mainstream news, the, the propaganda media, because they're seeing that it is propaganda, they're looking for other platforms to be able to find information, make decisions for themselves. And so you're right, it's, it's not a matter of saying, oh, well, just, just don't use it. Well, everybody move to a flip phone or something and, and not have access to this. I don't think that's a realistic proposition for most people.